Hello everybody, my name is Megan. Welcome back to my channel. And this is in fact, Miss Megan Knits. Today I have for you a video all about designing your own socks. I myself have designed several pairs of socks in the past and um, it's really not that hard. If you're looking for a pattern of socks I've designed, I will point you towards my Ravelry page, which will be linked and the Vanilla Socks for Dad pattern, which I have for free. Um, many people have downloaded it. Some people have liked it. I don't tend to write patterns for the socks I design. Usually I just make one off for loved ones, for family. And I'm here to show you my method that I use. Other people will probably use other methods, but this is the way that works for me. Here is a sock that I have recently finished. So I have this sock here to demonstrate. I did design this sock myself. So a sock really has two elements to it. You have the actual structure of the sock, and then you have the patterning or design that you put on the sock. So for me, the structure half always comes first. There's several things to consider when planning the structure of your sock. One big thing is do you want to knit from the cuff down or do you want to knit from the toe up? This matters because the way you measure things and the way you work toes and heels and even cuffs can change depending on which one of those methods you choose. So the first thing you want to get a hold of is the length and width of the foot you are knitting this for. You can make special custom socks for somebody by actually measuring their feet. If you're going to do that, you want the length from heel to toe and you want the circumference of the foot. This part that I'm wrapping my fingers around. If you don't have a foot on hand to measure, you can find online um, general approximates of measurements for different sizes of people. So if you're knitting a gift for someone who's far away or if you're knitting it for a surprise, you can find average men's and women's um, feet sizes, average children's feet sizes by age. You know, you can, you can find approximate measurements online that usually works. Second thing you want is your gauge. Now, of course, it depends on the type of yarn and the type of needles you're wanting to use for a sock. Um, if you're someone who knits a lot of socks, you probably have a feel for what your standard sock gauge is. For example, I know that on US two needles with fingering weight yarn, I knit at a gauge of approximately eight stitches per inch. Because I already know this, this is what I use when doing my calculations and designing socks. However, if I didn't know this, I would make a swatch. One of the things that's important in your swatch is you're gonna probably also want your row gauge. So don't just make a tiny little sliver for your stitch gauge. It doesn't really matter what your gauge is because you're designing. So you're gonna fit the sock to your gauge rather than fitting your gauge to the pattern. Although it is easier to do the math if you have a nice round number. Next, you wanna make choices about your type of toe, your type of heel, and your type of cuff. If you are knitting top down, you have different toe options than if you're knitting toe up. So to think about the basics, I wanted a rib to cuff here. I wanted to do a flap and gusset heel, but I like knitting my socks toe up. I found instructions for a toe up heel, a flap and gusset style on modern daily knitting. And another thing I wanted to consider when I considered heel is my foot architecture. You can Google all these different things about pros and cons of different heel types, but I have very high arches. This matters because when I knit short row heels or afterthought heels, they don't fit right. Those heels work for a lot of people, but not for me. So it's important that I take that into account when I'm designing a sock to fit my foot. Your toe, of course, toes are pretty simple usually, but there are all different kinds of ways to make a toe. Um, and you can look into the different ways available. Another thing you want to take into account is the fact that you are going to be knitting these socks. You want to make sure that you are accounting for your own knitting abilities or knitting comforts. Once you have an idea of the elements you want, you're going to talk dimensions. So for a sock, Generally, you have the dimension around the sock. This is the leg length, part of which is the cuff length. You have the distance from heel to toe, and then you have the length of the toe. The first one to talk about, because it's the easiest, is the circumference. You start with the measurement of the circumference of the foot. You subtract a little. Why do you subtract a little? Because socks have something called ease. All ease is, is the relationship between the size of the thing, the sock, and the size of the body part you're knitting it for the foot. Socks are usually a little bit smaller than the feet so that they can stretch and fit really snug. That's called having a negative ease. Different people have different amounts they subtract. So for example, I usually do about 10% negative ease. Okay, so I thought I'd show you how to do the math here. In this example, we're going to be working with a foot circumference of eight inches, a foot length of nine and a half inches, 
and a gauge of eight stitches and ten and a half rounds for every inch in stockinette stitch. So the first thing you're going to do is calculate your ease. Ten percent of your circumference equals your ease. So for this example, we have a circumference of eight. Ten percent times eight equals 0.8. And I'm going to work in decimals because it's easier for me than fractions. Now that you have your ease, you're going to take your circumference minus your ease to equal the circumference of the actual sock. So this is your foot circumference. And this is going to be your sock circumference. So in this case, we're going to take that. Our circumference is 8 inches. We're going to subtract 0 0.8, which is our ease. And we are going to get 7.2. Your result from this calculation is the measurement of the distance around the tube of the sock. Now you're going to take that circumference, which is a measurement, and turn it into a number of stitches. You're going to take your sock circumference and multiply it by your number of stitches per inch, which is going to be your gauge, your stitch gauge. And for that, you're going to get your circumference stitch count. Or in other words, the number of stitches around your sock is going to be. So let's do that with our numbers. Our sock circumference is 7.2. We're going to multiply it by the number of stitches per inch. In my case, that's 8. And that's going to equal 57.6. This doesn't have to be super exact because socks are meant to be a little bit stretchy. So you actually have a little bit of wiggle room. So what you want to consider is that you have a whole number of stitches. You don't have like half a stitch or something like that because when you knit, you can't do that. The other thing that I highly encourage you to consider is that your number of stitches is divisible by four. Dividing for heels is so much easier if you have a total number of stitches divisible by four. That's just how the math of most socks works out. So what does this mean? Well, I can't have 0.6. I need to have another divisible by four. The closest number that accomplishes that is 56. So the sock I knit will have 56 stitches around. So that number is going to be the circumference number. It's going to be the circumference around the leg and the circumference around the foot because they're usually pretty close. So in socks, we usually use the same measurement. The leg measurements are actually really simple. You can make the leg pretty much as long or as short as you want. You could cast off right here or cast on right here and only do a little leg and call those shorty socks, like ankle socks, or you could do long knee high socks. The only thing you want to be concerned about with the leg is if you do it really long, you start entering calf territory. You need to do calf shaping. All calf shaping is, is because your ankle is not as thick as your calf. So if the sock you make is going to go up that far, then you want to make sure you do some increases around the calf. If you have any questions about that, you can look up what is calf shaping on the internet and somebody will guide you in the right direction. And then how much cuff you want ribbed versus how much leg, that's all up to you. It's completely design choice. But this length needs to be correct. Otherwise, you'll have a big flappy bit on the end of the toe or it won't fit, um, both of which are bad outcomes. This is where your row gauge comes in. Now it's actually a very similar process for top down versus toe up socks. I'm gonna talk in terms of top down socks first and then give you an explanation on the end how to apply this to toe up just because I think it makes a little bit more sense top down. You knit the leg for as long as you want it and this will be the top of the ankle when you're done. And then you knit the heel. And then once the heel happens, you have this length from here to the toe. You don't want this to be too long or too short. I don't use any ease calculation for the foot length, so that makes it really easy. You want from the heel to the toe to equal this length. So you can measure periodically as you knit from the back of the heel to wherever you are until you get to where you want to start the toe. How do you figure out where that is? I would calculate how many rows are in the toe I'm going to use. 
which you can usually figure out just by reading the instructions of the toe. The first thing I'm going to do is figure out how many rows are in the toe I'm going to use. Depending on the toe you use, this is going to look a little different. I'm going to walk you through doing it with a really basic toe that I use on a lot of my top-down socks. Um, but you should apply this process to the toe you're using, not just use my numbers. So for the toe I'm using, I'm going to decrease four stitches every other round. And I'm starting with 56 stitches in my sock, and I'm going to 12 stitches before I kitchener. There are a couple ways you can do this. One of the ways that I recommend if you're not super math confident is to actually write out every row. You could, for example, write round one, decrease 52 stitches, round two, plain, round three, decrease 48 stitches. And the way you could do that is you could actually work all the way down until you get to 12 and count how many rounds you wrote. I'm going to show you a way that uses a little bit of math, um, but both ways will work just fine. Use whatever you're comfortable with. So I'm going to figure out that to get from 56 to 12, how many stitches I need to decrease. So 56 minus 12 equals 44. That's how many stitches have to decrease. I decrease four stitches in every decrease round. So 44 divided by four is 11 decrease rounds. And I'm doing a decrease round every other round. So there's two rounds really for every decrease round. So I'm gonna do 11 times two equals 22. This means there are 22 rounds in my toe. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to use your row gauge and the number of rows in your toe to figure out how long the toe is going to be. So what you're gonna do is take your number of toe rounds and you're going to divide it by your row gauge. And that will equal the number of inches in your toe. So in my case here, I have 22 rounds in my toe. I'm going to divide it by my row gauge, which is 10 and a half. And the result from that is 2.095. There's lots more numbers. It doesn't work out even. Your next check is to see whether your number is something measurable. You are going to be measuring this number with a measuring tape or with a sock ruler. So you want to make sure it's something you can actually work with. Um, in this case, 2.095 blah, blah, blah is not a very good number to measure with. So I'm just going to call it two because that's the closest number that's easy for me to measure. Once you know how long the toe is going to be, you're going to subtract it from the total foot length. So we've determined our toe is two inches long. You take your foot length, which should be the total length of the sock. You're going to subtract from it your toe inches or length or whatever you want to call it. And that's going to get you distance to toe, or in other words, the amount you're going to have to knit starting from the back of the heel, so not the whole sock, measuring from the back of the heel to the toe. So let's try that. So our foot length is nine and a half inches. We're going to subtract two inches for our toe, and that's going to give us seven and a half inches. So we are going to knit our sock until it measures seven and a half inches from the back of the heel. And when we hit that measurement, we will start the toe. That's gonna give you the number to knit to at this step. So in this case, I'd knit all the way down until I get to that number, then start my toe. I wanna put in a little side note about afterthought heels. So afterthought heels aren't knit in the sock as you're knitting, but in the finished sock, they do count for part of the overall foot length. If you're going to use an afterthought heel and you are knitting it top down, 
I would find the distance of the heel the same way you would find a distance of a toe. And I would subtract that also from your foot length when you're finding the final measurement. So for example, if my foot length is nine and a half inches, minus two inches for my toe. But if I was doing a two inch afterthought heel and I hadn't put it in yet because you put those in at the end, that's gonna add another two inches. So what I have to do is subtract another two inches from my calculation. One of them being for the toe, just like we did, but the other one being from the heel that's not there yet that you are going to put in. If you're working toe up, um, you are already subtracting for the heel, so you don't have to worry about this step. For toe up socks, you do the same thing, but in the other direction. You're actually gonna be figuring out this distance on the heel, which is sometimes kind of tricky to figure out. So you wanna kind of think about the anatomy of the heel you are using. This heel has an upwards part and then it goes backwards. So it's not all the rows of the heel because some of these rows are going this way. These are the rows that matter. In the case of the tutorial I used for this heel, which I will link, um, uh, it was by Kate Atherley on Modern Daily Knitting. She wrote up a very detailed explanation on how to do this. So I didn't need to figure out which part to do it myself. Once you figure out how many rows that is, you do exactly the same thing as I explained with the top down socks, use your row gauge, find out how much distance that is, so subtract it from your foot length, and then that number is the number from the toe up before you have to start the heel. So now let's put it all together. For a top down sock, you might say, cast on X number of stitches that you figured out, rib for however long you want this part to be, maybe knit plain for however long you want this part to be, start heel, and then you insert the instructions for the heel you chose, knit foot down this way until you reach the number of inches you talked about, start toe, insert the instructions for the toe. A lot of my sock designing is just plugging in instructions for other stuff. For a toe up sock, it will look like you start at the toe and you put in the instructions for the toe. You work upwards, knit upwards until you get to the part where you have to start the heel, put in the instructions for the heel. After the heel, put in how much distance you want this to be and then how much ribbing you want, bind off. That's really all there is to it. If you're making a vanilla sock, which is just plain knitting and probably some rib at the cuff to keep it up, you can stop there. Um, you have a whole sock pattern uh, right there. You can basically take whatever kind of pattern you want and plunk it onto this pre-made formula that you already have. I save my previous sock designs, so if this ends up fitting really well, in the future, I can just come back to this sock and say, okay, yeah, this sock, but with color work, or this sock, but with cables. I can keep the same structure, but just put in different design elements. This particular sock is a knit pearl pattern across the front part, plain knitting across the back and bottom. All I did was take this stitch pattern I got from a stitch dictionary and just plunk it right on the front. You can really do pretty much any knitting technique on socks. Some things to consider. Socks need to stretch. Remember how we talked about that 10% ease. So socks do need to be a little bit elastic. Some types of stitches in knitting aren't super elastic. Uh, Fair Isle is a very common one that's not super elastic. Slip stitch patterns are often not super elastic. Um, and cables don't stretch a ton. There are ways to get around this. For Fair Isle, you wanna make sure you swatch in Fair Isle to make sure you are getting the gauge that you used all the math for. That will kind of make up for the fact that Fair Isle isn't very stretchy. I wouldn't do a sock with cables all the way around uh, without any sort of stretch. Lace socks are actually really beautiful. The lace actually stretches really nicely. If you're not sure, knit up a swatch, kind of stretch it, kind of play with it. See if it seems like something that would work. Something else you might want to consider is generally the bottom of the foot is something I keep just plain knit, something very smooth. Why? Because you're gonna be stepping on it. This texture is super fun for the top part of my sock and the instep, but not something I'd really want to step on. But some textures might even be uncomfortable on the top of the foot. Depending on wearing these socks like running a marathon, you might not want any texture at all on the foot part that's gonna rub against the shoe. But yeah, really anything can be used if you accommodate for it correctly. All right, that was a lot of information. I hope this helped. I hope I can edit it in a way that makes sense because I just rambled for a good number of minutes. Go forth and make your own socks.
If you're not sure, Google anything I said in this video. That's how I learned. I learned by Googling. Thank you so much for watching me today. My name is Megan. This has been Miss Megan Knits, and I will see you in a future video.